Hello everybody, I'm Red Dragon Web Design, and I recently started teaching myself assembly language, and one of my favorite ways to learn languages is through doing interactive exercises. I go find a website where there's some really easy problems, and I can type them in and do the code and submit, and it tells me if I'm right or wrong. I find these interactive exercise websites are a very good way to learn to code. So, I did that with assembly and I chose the website Code Wars. It was recommended to me on Reddit. Um, excellent website, it has tons of languages, um, tons of levels, there's even a ranking system which is really motivating. Um, so that's kind of my motivation. What I want to do is create a YouTube series where I walk through Code Wars problems in assembly because when I was looking for YouTube videos on this I wasn't really finding a lot of material. Um, so that's my goal. That's what I'd like to do. This will be the first video in a series on doing Code Wars problems in assembly language. So this is the Code Wars website. This is actually the very first problem that you will be given um, no matter what language you choose. Um, it's a multiplication problem. You have to basically fix their code and make the multiplication work. So we're going to choose NASM, which is one of the dialects of assembly language. Click on that. And then right away, even before you've even made your account, it gives you the problem and some sample code. And like I said, we need to figure out how to fix this um, assembly code. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so let's take a quick look at this. I just want to I want to look at the code that they gave us, which is mostly complete but has like one or two bugs. And I'll go through what all of these things mean. Um, and then finally we will end the video with fixing the problem and submitting. On the left here we have the code, and on the right I have some slides that are going to help me explain. Let's just walk through the code and see what everything does. Um, so this global multiply statement is going to make this multiply label global. So just always put a global uh, statement in your um, assembly that's needed for it to compile in Code Wars. And then sometimes you'll have a Sometimes you'll have a section data right here, and it'll contain some uh, some data. This is where you put um, strings and arrays and ints, anything that's a constant, really. Um, we'll go in this section, and this is where you'll kind of set it up. And then you'll also give it a label. So you might call this uh, string, and then you might set up your string. And then you would terminate it with a null character because in C programming language um, you any arrays are terminated with zero that's how it knows that it's the end of the array um, we're not going to use that for this problem but I figured I'd mention it because it's an important section then after that you have section text um, they really should have named that section code or something like that um, but they call it section text everything below this statement is going to be our program code so that's how these sections work. Um, from where it says section down to the next place where it says section, all of that is part of that section. Um, and then we have these labels. Um, in assembly, you'll notice the programs are going to end up having lots of labels um, because there's no braces in assembly. There's no this kind of thing. Um, it's all jumps. So you might say jump multiply. And jump is the same as go to in C. So when you get to a jump, if you get to jump multiply, it'll actually move the instruction pointer. It'll move the current instruction location from the jump command up to this multiply label. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Let's see, next slide. Um, let's also, let's get into some basic instructions now. These um, items in purple are our instructions. Um, so far this program only has two. Um, we have move, which is an important instruction. That's how you do variable assignment in assembly. These white things here happen to be, they're, they're kind of like variables, they're called registers. Those are spots in your CPU that can hold values. Um, and they all have names, and I'll show you on the next slide what the names are and stuff. Um, so those are the registers, they're like variables, and you use this move command to move values around, like this EDI times ESI here. Um, if that were 
if that actually was a valid um, expression, it would take that and it would put it into EAX. It would move it into EAX. This is equivalent of EAX equals EDI times ESI and C. It moves the value on the right into the value on the left. And then we talked about jump a little bit. Um, we're actually not going to use jump in this particular program, but I figured I'd mention it. Um, and then this right here stands for return. Um, so in Code Wars, um, the the code here is not is not um, an entire program that could run outside of Code Wars. Um, it's just a, a snapshot of of a function. So just like in a higher level programming language, pretend this whole thing is inside of a function. There's a wrapper. Um, and this return is going to be the same as returning out of our function. And return in, in assembly is always going to return EAX. Well, one of the A registers. It's going to return one of these uh, A register variables. Um, I'll talk about more about the different ones, the different register variables in the next slide. All right, so here's a quick list of the different registers. Um, Registers are like variables. We talked about that. You assign them using the move command. Um, each row on here is a different register. Um, pretend for the moment. Pretend all this stuff on the left um, is in here, and just focus on the 64-bit. We're going to call them R A X B C D, and then you have R S I, um, source index, R D I, destination index, B P base pointer, S P stack pointer, and then a bunch of general purpose registers. Um, the R stands for how wide the register is. So in this case, it's 64-bit, uh, which I think is 8 bytes. Um, and so that is going to be the type of register we use to hold pointers, like memory addresses. Um, those will all end up going into the 64-bit register, usually. Um, and then next to it, if you want to switch the size of the register, you put an E in front of it instead of an R. And that will go down to 32-bit, which is a common... Um, which is a common size for, say, integers, like ints, um, unsigned ints, stuff like that. But you can even go down all the way to 8-bit, um, which is um, like you could put a, a char in there, for example. Um, that would hold 256 um, pieces of information, possible, possible um, bit settings. Yep, that's about it for registers. Over here, you can see we're using EAX. EAX here on our table. That's this first one right here. Um, and then they're using EDI and ESI. Um, so yeah, I think that's good for now. We can talk a little bit more in detail in future videos when we actually need all that knowledge. But for now, just long story short, these are variables. Anytime you see any of these letters in this configuration, I mean, it's a variable name. And in assembly, the variables are fixed. Um, you can't make up your own variable names. You have to use their register names. All right. Next, I want to talk about um, different commands. Remember these purple things, the instructions, different instructions that um, do arithmetic. Since this is a multiplication problem, we need to fix this and make it multiply. We're going to need to use a multiplication instruction. Uh, so I just want to briefly mention all the basic arithmetic instructions, and then we will use the one we need. You have add for addition, sub for subtraction, mool for multiplication, also imool, um, which is um, signed integer multiplication, and then div and idiv for division. And then I'll even throw in these two because these come up a lot. You have inc and dec for increment and decrement. Um, in C, this would be plus plus and minus minus. All right, so I'll skip back up here real quick. Um, One tricky thing about assembly arithmetic is it's not... It, you always have to set it equal to itself. So unlike in C, like you might, you might uh, write something like this. You might write add and then the things you want to add, and then you would put it into, you know, a variable. Like, let's say we wanted to add 2 and 2 and put it in A. You might do add 2, 2, and A. That'd be a pattern we would use in a higher level language. But for assembly, we have to take what's in one of the existing variables, existing registers. So, um, so let's just say EAX for this. And let's say we wanted to 
do 2 plus 2, we'd actually have to put 2 into EAX, and then we would have to add 2 to that, and then e EAX would be equal to 4. Um, so it's this pattern over here. Um, add EBX and 7 would be EBX equals EBX plus 7. And a lot of the arithmetic instructions in assembly are like this. Um, so be cognizant of that and watch out for that. You're going to have to set um, the variable with one of the things you want to add, subtract, multiply, divide first, and then you're going to have to run the addition, subtraction, multiplication on it. Alright, um, moving on to multiplication and division. These are kind of complicated. I don't want to get too into these. Um, for now, we just need to know enough to solve our problem. So we're going to use the same pattern. Um, we need to like, let's, let's start fixing up the code here. Um, so move EAX. Actually, we need to cover one more thing before we get into this. Let's cover what EDX and ESI are here. So this is might be one of the most complicated things about starting assembly um, without any tutorials or anything. This certainly was very confusing to me. Because we're in a function, um, we need to know what data is coming into the function, the function parameters. and we already talked about how to get data out of the function. We use ret return and um, and uh, RAX or EAX register. That's how you get data out of the function. But to get data in, to know the function parameters, there's a very specific way to get those. The data is placed in certain registers. Um, and what those registers are depends on what platform you're using, what um, instruction set architecture, what ISA you're using, um, like we're using and then like Windows and uh, Linux are different. Um, not even a hard-coded difference there, but the way that their compilers um, just traditionally, like what, what registers they place those values in. Um, so yes, this was a difficult part for me when I started Code Wars because A, I didn't know necessarily about all the details of this, and B, it's not clear what, what um, architecture the Code Wars compiler that checks all of the answers is using. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you skip forward at light speed here. I'm going to help you short circuit all of that. Um, I'm just going to tell you it uses Linux x64. So we're going to focus on this. In fact, for now, we're just going to delete all that. We're not going to worry about it. We'll get to Windows examples in a future video. Um, Linux x64, these the data coming into the function, the first parameter will be RDI, the second will be RSI, the third will be RDX, the fourth will be RCX, the fifth will be R8, the sixth will be R9, and don't even worry about the stack yet, we'll teach you stack in a future video. And then there's some other tricky stuff here, we'll, we'll cover it in a future video, let's keep it simple for this. So all we need to know right now for our multiply problem, let's make some comments using semicolon. RDI equals number one that we want to multiply. RSI equals number two that we want to multiply. And our goal is to get the code to do this. Remember, when you when you uh, when you execute this ret instruction return, it is going to send whatever's in RAX as the return value. So our goal is to get RAX to equal RDI times RSI. If we were writing this in C, that's what it would look like. Something like that. Int RAX equals RDI times RSI. So they gave us some code here. We're already partially there. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, um, you cannot do this in, in assembly. Um, you could only do this if it were if it were inside some brackets, because that would be a memory address and it allows it allows some uh, some computations there. But for anything, for for our intents and purposes, we cannot use this. We must use that mul mul multiplication instruction. And for simplicity, we'll assume it's an unsigned number. We won't worry about signs yet. We'll talk about that in a future video, because I think we can get this to pass without using imul or checking signs or anything like that. So. Knowing that we can't do that, we need to use the pattern I talked about earlier with the addition. 
I'm going to use that pattern where we put number one into some into in this case let's put it into EAX and then we need to multiply number two by EAX and then how convenient EAX is also the variable that we're going to return so we don't even need to move our solution into a different register before we return anyway so let's do that so, and then keep in mind here they're using E which is the 32-bit version which is what you usually use for integers so let me just go ahead and change all this to E let's keep it simple let's try not to be confusing this is the first video um, so the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna put number one let's see let's pretend let's let's just write the C code so that it's clear for you int return value equals number one that's what that's doing pretend return value is EAX because that's the value that is going to be returned by return Int return value is equal to number one and then our next instruction remember we need to multiply in the second number so the way we're going to do that we're just going to do multiply ESI because ESI is the second number so this is equivalent to return value times equals number two and then return and then remember return always returns EAX so this is return return value and that should do it I think this will pass uh, let's give it a try bam so Code Wars has all these tests that it runs on it. It has a couple tests that it shows you so that you can do basic debugging. Um, and then it has a couple of randomized tests that it doesn't show you and that keeps you from just writing a solution that returns the values of the tests. And it also usually includes some tricky edge cases. Um, the tests can actually get pretty tricky. Sometimes you can't really tell what's going on. Um, you can't tell exactly what, um, what data is causing your, your function to fail. Um, and I'll show you some tricks for that in a future video. Um, there is a way to get that data. It's just not, it's just not given to you easily. You have to write some code for it. Um, anyway, I think that is a pretty good start. Um, I do have plans to make several more of these videos. I do want future videos to be more focused on code and less on the slides. I really want to just get to the point where I've taught you enough of the basics that I can sit down and just kind of start coding because uh, I think that's the best way to learn. I really enjoy doing Code Wars problems. I really enjoy um, learning through watching other people do um, these types of exercises. Um, so anyway, long story short, that's my plan. I do plan to make more of these videos. Um, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Um, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye.